This week's blog post is the seventh in my Sculpture Synopsis series. It's on the early Renaissance. For each post in this series, we first look at a few characteristic examples, then the date, the location, the dominant ideas, media subject style, many major innovations that occurred in this period, big names in art, where to see the originals, and further reading. So here are a few characteristic examples. On the left by Donatello, in the middle by Luca della Robbia, and on the right by Andrea del Verrocchio. Dates. There are two things that occur before the Renaissance but are relevant to it. The first is that from 1269 to 1294, Brunetto Latini, who holds high political offices in Florence, decides to turn to Cicero and Aristotle for political advice. This is the beginning of the humanist movement, which I'll talk about under dominant ideas. With this interest in Greek and Roman literature comes a proto-Renaissance in literature and painting, but it is abruptly halted by the other major event, 1347 to 1351, the Black Death arrives in Europe by trade routes from Asia. There is no cure. The plague recurs five times by 1400, and a couple times after that. By some estimates, a third of the population of Europe dies, so things come grinding to a halt. The early Renaissance in the visual arts picks up in the 1410s and lasts until 1500. Location. The Renaissance begins in Florence, which gained political independence during the late Middle Ages and has become a commercial center. That increase in wealth helps set the stage for the Renaissance. Subsistence farmers do not have the time or energy to quibble about politics, much less to create great works of art. By the mid-15th century, the ideas and art spread from Florence to the rest of northern Italy, and by 1600 they spread through much of northern Europe. We'll see that next week. Dominant ideas of the early Renaissance. The big one is humanism. In the late 13th century, Brunetto Latini, who died in 1294, begins to look for political guidance not to ecclesiastical and feudal authorities, but to Cicero and Aristotle. Around Latini, in Florence, develops a circle of scholars who become known as humanists. Humanists look to Greek and Roman works not for their historical data, not for the sake of nostalgia, but as vivid inspiration for making this world a better place. They believe individuals should have intellectual curiosity about their world and that human actions within that world, including the pursuit of fame and wealth, can be admirable. Writers of this early period include Petrarch, Dante, and Boccaccio. They call their period a rebirth, a renaissance, after the darkness of the Middle Ages. Another point under dominant ideas has to do with classical learning versus the church. These humanists believe those two are compatible and complementary, not antagonistic. So they're not choosing pagan Greece and Rome over Christianity. They think they can reconcile them. In art, the new and dominant idea is that man in this world are worthy of attention and accurate representation. Moving on to media. Renaissance artists work in marble, wood, terracotta, which is clay. That's an example on the right. They also work in bronze, using the lost wax process, which had been unknown during the Middle Ages. We'll come back to that with Donatello. Subjects. Renaissance artists do biblical and religious subjects, since the church is still a major patron of art, but they are much more varied in how they represent those subjects. Renaissance artists also do portraits, including busts, full-length figures, and equestrian portraits. In style, these artists attempt to observe and record nature accurately, and they usually show their figures upright and confident. Again, a great change from the Middle Ages. Let's look at major innovations. Linear perspective via mathematical formula is invented for painting, probably by the architect Brunelleschi. Its earliest surviving use in sculpture is Donatello's relief of Herod's feast for the baptistry in Siena. That's the image on the left. The other major innovation of this period is rethinking every subject. Even though Donatello's subjects are still religious, he consistently looks for new messages and new ways to convey them. It's Pazzi Madonna, this one, 
is enormously influential. It breaks the mold of medieval Madonnas. I've given you examples on the right. Innovators in Sculpture Chapter 8 has more about Donatello's rethinking of the Madonna, St. John the Evangelist, St. George, and Herod's Feast. There are many known artists in the early Renaissance. I want to mention just three of them. Donatello, who died in 1466, is the greatest European sculptor of the 15th century. He is known for his inventive subjects and compositions. He is the first sculptor since the fall of Rome to cast full-scale figures in bronze. His bronze David, which I showed you a few minutes ago, is the first freestanding nude male sculpture since Greek and Roman times. Donatello is the first artist since ancient times to create art for the sake of art rather than for purely didactic purposes. Another big name, Luca della Robbia and the della Robbia family are known for creating charming angels and children, especially half-length Madonna and child reliefs in blue and white terracotta, such as the one in the center. And the third big name I want to mention is Andrea del Verrocchio, who died 1488. He's known for his work in bronze, gold, silver, and paint. Leonardo da Vinci apprenticed in his studio. Where would you go to see the originals of these works? A very good place to start would be the churches in northern Italy. Marvelous works were made for and remain on display in the churches of Florence, Siena, Padua, Venice, and so on. For example, Santa Maria Novella in Florence, which doesn't look really spectacular on the outside, that's it at the upper left. It has works on display by Duccio, Ghiberti, Masaccio, Brunelleschi, Filippino Lippi, Rossellino, Uccello, Maiano, Ghirlandao, Botticelli, Bronzino, and Vasari, all of whom are major names. You could also see Renaissance, early Renaissance works at the museums of Florence, especially the Uffizi, Borgello, Palazzo Pitti, Museo dell'Opera del Duomo, which includes works from the cathedral, as well as the Accademia, which is where the David by Michelangelo is. Further reading. Paul Oscar Christeller's Renaissance Thought and the Arts is a classic. Eisenstein's Printing Press as an Agent of Change is a really interesting look at how the printing press changed everything. And Dorothy Dunnett's The House of Niccolo is an eight-volume series of novels about a widely traveled Florentine banker and Renaissance man. They cover about 1460 to 1483. And as a bonus, there's a recent TV series called The Medici on Netflix, which has fabulous costuming and covers about the 1420s, almost to 1500. If you want to know more about why I'm writing the sculpture synopsis, you can go to the first blog post in the series. DianeDurantyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on dianedrantywriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.